Hi students and welcome to the preliminary chemistry video series on metals. In this particular video we're going to focus on some of the more common alloys. We've started to have a little bit of a look at the history of metals and as soon as we start to do that we come across this term alloys. The importance of alloys is that alloys are just mixtures of metals in varying combinations or proportions. They're not compounds because the ratios are not fixed um, and in fact the properties of the alloys will change depending on the actual proportions of the two or more um, metals or components of each of the mixtures within the alloy. Alloys can be one of two types, homogenous such as brass, the first example that we have here, brass, uh, or heterogeneous such as steel. The main thing that distinguishes these is that in a homogeneous uh, alloy, the replacement metal, in this case the zinc, is actually of a similar size. The atoms are of a similar size to the copper atoms and hence um, there's no real um, change in the overall lattice structure. Because the two atoms are roughly the same size, the zinc atoms just simply um, replace or substitute for those copper atoms and the lattice is pretty much intact. But for the heterogeneous ones we have, uh, such as steel, we have the addition of carbon which is a very small atom by comparison to the size of iron. And you can see there's a quite significant difference between the size of the carbon atoms and the iron atoms. So they don't just sit in the lattice structure, they actually sit in the interstitial spaces or sit between the atoms. And this does actually change the crystals and hence um, not only the properties, but also uh, influences some of the key uses. Why would we alloy? Well, several reasons. Mainly because when we start to add certain atoms into the metallic lattice structure of uh, crystals, we change the properties. And it's these changed properties that are most desired when we're creating alloys. Some of the changes include color, so brass, for example, is a different color to uh, copper, which is its primary um, metallic component. Uh, hardness, steel is, is one of the uh, most important alloys where hardness is a key factor. The addition of carbon increases the hardness of iron on its own. Um, changes in malleability, so high carbon tool steel is um, less malleable than iron, harder to shape. Changes in electrical conductivity, such as some of the cuprinical alloys of brass, which have lower conductivity than their um, parent metal, copper, and also changes in things like melting point. And sold is an example of uh, a low melting point alloy um, that's been produced, which is uh, lower in melting point than either of its two main components, lead or tin. Now when we're looking for um, a breakdown of alloys, there's a couple that are worth having a look at and I'm just going to very briefly touch on each of these in this particular video. So bronze uh, from the Bronze Age is an alloy of copper and tin. A little bit of tin into the copper structure increased the strength of the copper and this made it very suitable for the production of weapons. Pewter was also made um, as an alloy, in this case lead and tin. And one of the things about um, lead is it's very soft, very easy to work, and so it's much easier to shape into a variety of cooking utensils. Of course, we realize that eating uh, or drinking out of uh, containers that uh, included lead in their structure was going to cause a lot more damage than the problems that it solved. Uh, and so you don't see much pewter being used these days. So then to have a quick look at a couple of these in a little bit more detail, firstly steel. Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon and the proportion of carbon actually affects the strength of the steel. So you can see we have here a couple of different types of steels uh, from pig iron which is kind of your basic steel, cast iron grates, very old kind of uh, technology, uh, up to things like stainless steel where you have very very small amount of carbon and perhaps some additional um, elements, in this case chromium and nickel, which uh, are used to change those properties of the iron and, and have uses such as sinks and cutlery, very shiny, very bright, very attractive. 
Brass is another alloy. It's another copper alloy. In this case, the um, addition of zinc into the structure of the copper and the proportion of each of these also affects um, not only the color of the alloy. Uh, so brass, uh, like bronze, is a yellowy color and um, which is a contrast to the salmony pink color of copper. Uh, but also some slight changes in the amount can also change the color. So we can also have a reddish brass, which is used in enamel jewelry, um, and it's a little stronger and harder as a result of that extra zinc that is there. So effectively, the higher the proportion of zinc, the greater the hardness and the greater the tensile strength. But of course, you can't have too much in there or the zinc starts to dominate. Brass can be highly polished and used for ornamental material, and uh, you're probably also aware that brass is one of the important um, groups of instruments in the orchestra. And finally, solder. Solder is another um, alloy that we're going to investigate in class. It's one that is an alloy of tin and lead, and the proportion of lead to thin can, uh, lead to tin can actually affect the melting point of the solder. It is less than either of the lead or the tin. So we need to heat those up to a fairly high temperatures in order to get them to mix together. But then once they have formed the alloy, it then melts at a much lower temperature. And that makes it a nice, uh, easy material to work with for fusing uh, different types of other metals together, particularly the joining of wires. Two important properties that uh, uh, have affect its use are uh, the fact that it does lower the melting point so it's easier to melt um, very quickly and the fact that it retains its high electrical conductivity means we can use it in electric circuits and know that the electrical uh, current is going to continue to run through those joints. The other thing of course with solder is that it does stick very strongly, adhere strongly to other metals in both the solid and the liquid states. And that's one of the reasons why it's so useful as a joining material. So this is just a couple of different types of alloys. Important that you have one or two of them under your belt so you can discuss them uh, at some point when you're asked about them. So pick one or two and make sure that you understand what they're composed of and the different types of properties that are actually changed as, as a result of the addition of, of one or more elements to a base metal. Thanks for watching.